That is a nice fish. Welcome to On Water Magazine's Fishing New England. I'm Jay Baver. Over the last few years, sport fishing for school-sized bluefin tuna has exploded in popularity around New England. Part of the reason for this is the great numbers of fish that have been around and their proximity to near shore areas. On the Water Magazine's Neil Larson wanted to find out what this tuna madness was all about. So he hooked up with Captain Eric Stewart off the coast of Cape Cod and quickly came down with his own case of tuna fever. We left Bass River in darkness at about 4 a.m. with the crew from the hookup aboard the Tammy Rose. I had heard about this bluefin tuna bite that was happening about seven miles east of Chatham on Crab Ledge for about a month now. And I wasn't disappointed in the least to find out I was going on this shoot. We were going to be using a seven rod spread mixed with daisy chains, spreader bars, live bait simulators, and swimming plugs. Eric was marking bait and we were into an area where whales were feeding heavily. No sooner was I into the intro when the first tuna appeared. We're on the boat, we got uh, squid. We got one! We got one! He's on it again. Oh. Reeling that one, reeling that one, Corey. What do we got? All bluefish here, we're getting knocked down everywhere. Go to it, Neil, we don't know, it's all bluefish here. And today there were bluefish in the mix too. Large bluefish were competing with the school-sized tuna for our offerings. This was my first time going for tuna of any kind. And each time we had a knockdown, my heart raced. On this occasion, the bluefish beat the tuna to the punch. Josh and Corey, the mates on the Tammy Rose, worked as a team to clear the cockpit, keep lines tight, and in this case, release the blues and get the spread reset as quickly as possible. Whales are good indicators that there's bait in the area. Where whales are feeding, the tuna are typically nearby feeding on that same bait. <laughs> Captain Eric gave me a quick lesson in using stand-up you let your legs and your body do all the work. Go ahead and lean down now. See how you can pump that right up? Okay, I really like the system because it's very simple to put on. Keep it high on your back. Just drop your knees and pump the fish up. See how good that is? Now go ahead, I'll support you. Yep, you go right ahead and drop right back. See how much I can support you. Your left hand is gonna to be to guide the line. Always keep it right there on the reel. Guide the line and that way if, the, if we did break him off, with your left hand there, that's gonna protect it from the rod coming up and smacking you in the face. So always keep your left hand there on there to guide it, okay? Great, you don't have to keep it on. Right. You can just leave it unclipped, just unclip one side, leave it in the cockpit, we hook up, you throw your harness on. Excellent. All right? Over here. Uh, things are starting to look real good here, guys. We're marking a lot of bait. I got whales right in front of me here. Starting to look it's critical that the mates work as a team. Everyone has a role when you're fighting large pelagic fish. In an IGFA tournament, as the angler, I'd be the only one allowed to touch the rod and strap myself into the harness. In this case, I had never used a harness system before, and we were out to have some fun. So those were the only rules that apply. The first tuna gave me a good idea of how to use my legs when working with the stand-up harness system and get comfortable with the gear. There we go. It's a baby. That's it, guys. Great. Now you get the. Uh, there you go. Towel over the eyes, Eric. Yeah, calms, calms, calms them calms down. Calms them right yeah, down. Yeah, absolutely. Good job. Hey, you know what? It's a start. That's the warm-up fish. That's a nice warm-up. Try to hold him up in front of him if you can. Yeah. The little guy. The little puppy. All right. There we go. Want a quick measure on the box there? Just measure it real quick. We'll get him back in the water. 
Get out of the way, bro. Just a real quick measure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Approximation, Corey. Okay, so he would. You could take him over and eat him, but we're gonna let him go because we want a bigger fish. Just drop him right in there. Inches. All right, very good. Next time, what you want to do, Corey, is just slide him in down there in the in the door, please. Okay, just slide him into the door. All right, not what we're really after, but it's a tuna on the deck. What? You got one. What we're after. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we got one. It's a good start. Once again. Hey, like you said earlier. Once again, my green machine. The green machine. This little silly thing. I'll tell you right now. The oldest tuna lure in the world is a green machine. I mean, it, and it's nothing fancy. It's a plastic head. This is actually made by Ocean Lure down in, uh, in, in Rhode Island. And we just rig them up in the shop. It's a single skirt lure. It's not even a double skirt, just a cone plastic head. We put the three um, daisy chain in front of it yep. with a play action bird, and it's been deadly. It really has. And we've taken our biggest fish on it, too, this year. And we just took our, one of our smallest. But that's well, a start. You said earlier that the uh, the first one's the toughest. First one's one, the tough so we've, one. Uh, we've broken the. That's right. Uh, that's right. At least we're uh, we're gonna okay, go ashore go. tonight. At least flying the tuna flag too. Exactly. All right, brother. That's exactly. all. It's, that's what you know. Nice we have job. a saying. It's all about the bite, and that initial whack off the center rig is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. I wanted to see it. You know, scream some line. But right. that's all right. Good job. All right, hey, man. that's your first. That's it. All right, brother. Let's all get right. a bigger one. All right, guys. There you go, that's a tuna. There you go, Josh. There we go, boys. Now yeah, we're in them. There you go, that's a tuna. These fish hit like a freight train. And quickly we were on again. Josh helped me into the harness, and the fight was on. That's it. That's just how you want to do it with your hands. It's another warm-up fish. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger, yep. yeah. Good hit. At least we're in them now. Yep, hurry up, Josh. There we go. All right, we got uh, another tuna on here. A little bit bigger than the first one. Oh, the, uh, here we go, guys, coming up. Coming right up to the boat here. He's coming here we right go, boys. You stay square with him now. Stay square with him. These are like uh, the Martha's Vineyard uh, tuna that has been swimming around down there for the last couple of weeks. You can literally hear the power in the tail of the tuna as it beats on the deck. Hold on to him, Corey, for a minute, buddy. All right, Corey. And you can see the power in these fish as they practically shake Corey's arm off as he tries to hold on. Okay, there we go. Make sure he's all right. That's it. Nice kick. Good job, guys. All right. All right. Number two. Got to find Grandpa. Eric, about how many knots are you trolling at? I troll between like four to five ish, depending upon you know tide and wind and everything. Yeah. I do it more by the way I like the way the rigs look. You see here, the first tuna swung and missed at the near rigger but his schoolmate seconds later crashed the spreader bar on the outside rigger, and we were on again. That's a good tuna. Yeah, get him on it. Yeah, it's good. To watch these fish hit is incredible. Eric has a little saying at the hookup, it's all about the bite. To see a fish of this size attack will absolutely blow you away. I had officially come down with a bad case of tuna fever. A little bit bigger. Not 100% what we want, but a little bit bigger. Now remember, stay square with him at both sides because he'll still fight you. We're baby bigger. fishing today. Okay, just drop your rod down. Good job, guys. Nice job. You got him? 
There we go. Stand right with him there. All right. All right. Another puppy. You gotta find the big one. You gotta find the big one. We're gonna get this guy back in the water, find the big one. Nice hit, though. Nice hit. Good job. Okay, come on. Let's go. Let him go. You're watching Fish in New England. That's it, Corey. That is a nice fish. It's a little bigger. Fishing for tuna for the first time can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. To go over some of the basics of angling for tuna, let's join Captain Eric Stewart at his shop, The Hookup in Orleans, Mass, for some basic tuna tackle tips. When you're out catching schoolie bluefin, you don't have to be intimidated, and you don't need a whole arsenal of lures to catch them. Basically, the green machine is probably one of the easiest lures to fish out there, and has probably caught more tuna than any other lure in the world. What we've done is we've rigged them up on a daisy chain, which basically is three smaller green machines with one big hook bait. And it's about a nine foot leader. And in front of that, we take the play action bird and we clip it on the uh, leader. What this does is this has a mirror on it and it really presents a big splash and it acts as a big fish attracting device. The schoolie tuna just come up and they have to look at it. The other thing that's great in your spread is to put a swimming plug out. Either a Usuri swimming plug or the mega bait. Both of these are excellent lures, and you fish them right off your transom, 25, 30 feet max behind the boat. The colors that have worked the best, besides the green machine, would be the pink and the rainbow. Both of these have produced schoolie tuna all summer long. And then you can graduate right to a spreader bar. This is actually a titanium bar rigged with 14 green machines, and this will really bring the big fish up into your spread. Let's head right back offshore to the Tammy Rose for more action. As I mentioned earlier, whales are good indicators that there's bait in the area. Eric has found on the slack tide, not only do the whales feed more aggressively, so do the tuna. Bluefin tuna are built for speed. They can produce short bursts of speed exceeding 60 miles an hour. Square them up now. Oh yeah. A little better. Green machine. Thanks, fellas. Oh, yeah, this better is better fish. Uh, better fish, guys. Yeah, you got to hire to these puppies. That was a cool strike, though, huh? That was a great strike, yeah. I had marked them there, too, guys. Right on the slack. Oh, yeah, here. the whale feeding there. Was, uh, right on the slack. A lot of bait. Easing back and forth, using the legs. Somebody come over here and rail this one. Take the clicker out. I think these got a little more in them. Yeah. It's not a big fish, I don't think. I don't think it's a, probably a little bit bigger than the other ones. There you go. This is the boat. You should try to wait to open the tuna door, Corey, okay? You just step back into the boat, Neil. Now it's up to the leader, man. That's it, Corey. That is a nice fish. It's a little bigger. Although we had landed a legal fish, this one was substantially larger, and I was looking for a little sushi and wasabi back at the dock. 
That wasn't to be, but I guess that's why they call it fishing. No problem. No problem. He lives to fight another day. Woo! Okay. Good job. A little bit yeah. bigger. About a 50 pounder there. Much better fight. Much better fight. Much better fight. Much better situation. They're starting to bite here on the slack now, guys. You see how all of a sudden it's like the whales start showing, they start feeding, they're up on the surface more. We get the bites. It's the yep. slack right now. And hopefully they're going to turn right on and really feed here. So, cool beats. Over to me. Okay, we got him. No problem. We got him. He ain't going anywhere. Nice fish, guys. There we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leader a fish here. If we get another big fish on, I'm gonna leader it because I wanted to get that fish on deck there. When you leader, you have to wrap twice. That's how you. And then you, when you let go, you, know, you always keep your thumb and your hand pointed at the fish. If that's the fish, you don't take one wrap. You take two wraps. And then when you're going to let go, okay, watch. All you got to do is let go of your hand. That wraps will pull right off. If you take one wrap, it actually can get caught on itself. Three wraps is too many. But to wrap a fish, it's always inside to out, two wraps. And then when the fish starts to pull, as this line's pulling away, all you do is keep your hands and your thumbs just like you're pulling, you let go. All you do is open it up and those two wraps will pull off. One wrap has a tendency to actually can pinch you and get trapped. Three wraps is just one too many. Eric had a little trick he learned from a captain he fished with down south. Fish, come to me, I command thee. And sure enough, seconds later, we were on again. Taking a lot of line. Taking a hell of a the tuna's small, efficient stomach allows them to digest food quickly. It also makes them hungrier quicker. When these fish put the feed bag on, they mean business. We got a lines in, guys. We got a lot of work ahead of me on this one. We made a good run there at first, yeah. man. Yeah, well, he was, he banged it pretty good. All right, we're back to, uh, back to mono. Making some ground. Remember, he's gonna show you something at the boat, I guarantee yeah, it. I'm feeling him right now. A little head shake right there. Door I'll, no, I'll gaff, you'll lead her, Corey. Josh should be my backup, okay? And if I tell him he has a gaff or something, let's take a look at him, see how big he is. There you go. Yeah, that's that's it. That's shaking. We will get, we'll keep the gaff and then we'll do the door. We'll keep the door all closed. I don't want him getting yanked in here. That's it. He's gonna start doing some circles here at some point in time. You stay square. You can go right to the door and put your knees in there, man. Talk to me, Corey. You Straight got the bird. Down. Straight up and down. Okay. Be ready. Go get him, Corey. Go get the leader. Right here. Coming behind you. Pull him easy, easy, easy. Yeah, he's not ready. Go ahead, bring that leader back again. Pull him up. Pull him over to me. Okay, we got him. No problem. We got him. He ain't going anywhere. Nice fish, guys. There we go. All right. We got some sashimi now, boys. Oh, yeah. That was, a, that was worth the wait, huh? <laughs> That's that the one we were looking do. for. Oh, absolutely. You killed that too. You don't want to waste any meat, brother. All right, we're going to just get this gam out of there. That's right. There we go. You got to love them green machines. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Beautiful guys, that's what we've been waiting for. Look at that. Wow. That's a nice fish. That's 40, 50 pounds. Yeah. It took us a little while. We had it to pick two little ones, Let's but we it. got them. What a beauty. All right, I want to thank, uh, first off, we were on the hookup. I'd like to thank uh, Corey, Josh, and Captain Eric. Well, you did a great job, Neil. We're on the water magazines, fishing New England. Right on. 
thanks for watching today's episode of On the Water Magazine's Fishing New England. To learn more about today's show and to get the best fishing forecast for your area, log on to onthewater.com. From all of us here at On the Water's Fishing New England, we hope to see you on the water.